let's have a look. First of all, I'm going to take it into Camera Raw. So let's just choose Filter Camera Raw Filter. And let's just get our overall toning. You know what I'm going to do. I, I, I'm just dying to put some sunlight into this shot. So let's just warm it up just a little bit because these greens sometimes, I like them less, you know, forest green, even over in a forest, you know, with the blues. I like to warm them up a little bit sometimes, get a little bit of yellow into them. Um, but you know what? I'm going to hold off on that for a second. All right, so what we're looking at is the image here. It looks like we've got, if we click on it, we can see if there's any clipping. A little bit in the highlights, a little bit in the shadows, nothing to really be concerned about. But what I want to do is I want to bring some of this detail in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recover some of the highlights. Notice what happens over here when we recover those highlights. It brings in a little bit more of that detail. Now, if you were, had sun streaming through here, you might not necessarily want to do that. But, you know, that's, that's all personal taste. Looks like we've got some interesting stuff over here too. Let's do the same thing with the shadows. Let's open up those shadows a little bit. And now I'm going to take the exposure down. Just make it a little darker. There we go. I want to make this a little bit moody. There we go. So, you know, this was a perfectly exposed image, just so you know, but I just want to bring a little bit of a mood in here. Let's give it a little, just a touch of texture to bring out that moss a little bit. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to click OK. And there we go, now it updates. So I want to get a little bit of that mood so we can work on doing a little bit of light ourselves. So what I'm going to do on this is just do some simple dodging and burning. I'm looking up here, is this a stream or something over on the side here? In a situation like this, that stream looks really beautiful, but I'm just going to consider right now, let me just reset this. I'm going to consider just re-cropping this. Not that that doesn't look good, I think it looks amazing, but here's my suggestion. When you have something like this and you're not quite sure if it's a stream or whatever it is, generally I would rather keep it out of the photo or really bring it into the photo and really make it, you know, a, a point of focus. So, you know, otherwise people are going to be looking at it and, and it can be a little bit of a distraction even though it's nice to know this is by a stream when you you're, you're just kind of seeing a little bit I, I don't think it helps a little too much all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a new layer and I'm looking to see if Peter's in the house uh, maybe not maybe on a different time zone which can happen a lot okay so what we're gonna do is hold down the alt or the option key create a new layer and with this new layer we're gonna go into overlay blending mode and with the overlay blending mode, this is going to enable me to paint with a white. So I'm going to grab my Wacom pen, hit the B for brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flow all the way down to maybe around about 7 or 8%. Notice that we're in overlay blending mode. That means when I paint with the other color, with white, see that adds light. See what that does? So we're gonna be painting and adding light. Now, I'm just gonna tap on the brushes because I wanna go to the brush settings. In the brushes panel, I'm gonna turn off shape dynamics because I'm using a pressure sensitive pen. I'm gonna turn on transfer and set opacity to pen pressure. And with that opacity set to pen pressure, now I can paint more like you would with a pencil. So I don't want everything to be um, you know, full strength. I want to be able to use pen pressure and just gently shade. Now, if you don't have a Wacom pen or, or a similar um, pen, you know, uh, iPad or whatever, um, I would recommend then just take your brush setting, just drop your opacity of your brush down to maybe 5 or 10% and just start to play like that. And in that way, it gives you a little bit more control. Okay, so we've got an area here where I feel like some light is going to be coming in. So why don't we start just by enhancing that light. So I'm just painting up in here and I'm just lightening up this background area where the light might be coming through this canopy. 
Okay, so all we're doing here is just revealing our light source. Okay, great. So we've got light coming through here. Maybe a little bit might be going between the trees here and a, and a smidge over to the side there. I don't want to go too much, just a little bit. Okay, so we've got bright, bright, bright sun. So now the sun's coming through here. It's going to start to hit the edge of this tree here. So now we're going to start to get a little bit of rim on there. And a little bit maybe there. And, you know, it's funny because they have a saying in books for book covers. I don't know if you guys have heard the saying, green doesn't sell. Um, it's kind of interesting. So book covers with green apparently don't sell as well as other covers. Um, but I love dodging and burning with green. And I think it makes amazing photos. Uh, because it just shows the light so well. So we're just getting, you know, all I'm doing here is I'm just adding out a little bit of bit of rim light there. All right, so maybe this is getting a little bit of light now. This is where it's going to really start to happen. See what I'm doing? I'm just hitting the tops here, a little rim, a little bit of light just kind of wrapping around here. And I love it because it just starts to just pop. You know, see what we're doing here? And if you look at this before and after, see what we're doing? We're just popping that and a little bit here. And for some reason, green or the yellow, you know, when I go for a yellowy green, which I like to do a lot, it just really pops the light. Look at that. And just brings things to life. Just, you know, creating a bit more of a rim. You know, just going over there. And what is a rim? It's just basically the edge. You know, if you shine a light from behind, it just kind of wraps around a little bit and you get a little bit of that rim on the edge. I'm going to get a little bit here too. All right, it's looking nice. And you know, if I go too far, I can always roll it back here. So you can adjust the opacity. You don't have to go 100% opacity. So I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit. Let's create a new layer. And I might even go a little bit lower with the flow now. And by the way, flow for this kind of work will give you a much smoother result than opacity. But flow above, 10% doesn't really do much. You want to get it under 10%. So the 0 to 10 is where all the magic happens, just so you know. Um, so I'm just going to give this, yeah, see how high that is? Um, is that pen pressure working? Let's, uh, there we go. Make sure you turn that on so you can get that opacity. And uh, I'm just going to go a little bit bigger and I'm just very, yeah, hang on a sec. Ah, overlay blending mode. That's what I was doing wrong. Let's get that into overlay mode. There we go. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of light. And I'm definitely going to roll off this layer that I'm doing. So I'm going to give it more than I need. And this is where I'm kind of flooding it with the light. So it's not just the rim anymore. It's flooding that light in here. And maybe even just really getting bright into this area. This face wouldn't get too much because um, that's going to be shaded, but we'll, we'll get to the shadows in a second. And a little bit more light coming through here. And we're just kind of brightening up this area. All right, great. So why don't we just bring that back a little bit, take it off, and then we just roll it in a little bit. See what we're doing now is we're just adding a little bit of that sunlight. And if you wanted to give it a little more texture, what can look nice is when we get to these areas that zoom in a little bit. And this this can you know take a little bit of time, um, but if you wanted to go over these, the forward facing edges, let me just quickly do this. Watch what happens. I'm just hitting those forward areas, just hitting a little bit of light. It might not look like we're doing much right now, but when I zoom out, you'll see how much dimension this is adding. And what it's doing is it's accentuating the, the fact that we've got some curves there, we've got some textures, because we're essentially relighting this scene, you know, to give it just a little bit more pop. Um, and, you know, you guys know I'm sucker for images like this, so I know that's probably why they uploaded this one, because they knew I love doing this kind of stuff. Ah, that's not very accurate there, because the sun's coming from behind. But uh, look at that. See what that's done? If we look at this, 
before that and after see how now it's starting to add that light and the image is starting to come alive let's look at the before this is obviously not the complete before there's the complete before is there then we darken it down a little bit in camera raw and then we added this light and see what we're doing we're lighting this photo and it starts to become a little bit magical let's create a new layer and we're going to put this into overlay blending mode and this time I'm going to vignette I'm going to darken it down so let's hit the X key so now we're going to paint with black and let's go for a nice large brush and black is just going to enable us to see what I'm doing I'm just following the curves there of those shadows maybe a little bit more shadow in the side there a little up there a little in those trees and you can see what we're doing here wow that's going really slow and laggy but you guys get the idea there we go so what that's doing is it's by adding a little bit more of that shadow in there what it's doing is it's accentuating our highlight area so we're creating contrast and uh, you know if we look at this now see that see how this contrast is just making a pop and it's making more three-dimensional I'm gonna do something else here let me just create a layer over the top and I'm gonna add some light so let's grab a gradient and uh, you know what I'm just gonna grab a warmish tone a yellowish orangey kind of a tone here and I'm gonna try a circular I don't know if this is gonna work or not to the white I definitely don't want to do it to white I want to do it to transparent and let's just bring that out a little bit oh yeah this might work make it a little smaller there we go and now we start to play around with these blend modes you know light and screen some of the soft lights are probably gonna look good see as we go through some of these different blend modes I don't know if I'm liking the lighten or the screen more maybe the lighten and I can drop the opacity down on that a little bit so it's not so strong and here we go now see what it's doing is this light is kind of coming through maybe screen might look better now we can see those so it's creating just a little bit of haze that hard light looks good you know so now we've got some warm sun kind of haze coming through there and let's have a look at the before all the way before darkening it there and then after you know we've we've definitely added a little bit of